Welcome to the Inner Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm Paul Ryan, and today I want to talk to you about imposter syndrome. If you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you've tried to push your life forward at all to achieve the next level, to move on, then at some stage you've come across the demon imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome is when we feel like a fake, when we feel like we're going to be discovered any moment because we've moved from the known an area of our life where we feel competent and confident and certain, and we've moved into the unknown. So an area of life that's new and more challenging, where we're pushed and where we're growing. And this often happens when we're given or pursuing a new opportunity. We're going for a new job, or maybe we've been promoted. Someone has spotted our talent and moved us up to the next level within the business. Or if you own your own business, Maybe it's when you've acquired a new customer, you've been chasing a new customer and now you get them and now you have to face it, dealing with them and providing the service you promised to deliver. And in that moment, particularly if this is a very big customer or a very big opportunity, you feel like an imposter. You feel like I'm going to be found out any moment. And on one side of your brain knows that's completely not true, that you're competent, that you're talented and you're capable. But inside you have this sneaky feeling that you're going to be found out. If you line up 100 successful people and ask each one of them, man and woman, if they've ever felt imposter syndrome, they guarantee you 99% of them are going to say, yes, of course they have. And the other one is lying because we all feel imposter syndrome. It's just natural if we're trying to grow or if we're trying to push ourselves. So the most important thing I think you can realize about imposter syndrome is that it is universal. Everyone experiences. In fact, it's a symptom of growth. In some way, it's a positive thing because it's life telling you that you're stepping beyond your comfort zones, that you're trying to move out. And if you're someone who wants to grow and wants to expand in your life, and if you're not, you've no business on this podcast. But if you listen to this podcast, it means you're trying to grow your inner world. And when we grow our inner world, we want to feel better. We feel more peaceful, feel more centered in ourselves. But we want to expand that into the outer world and we want to have a greater impact in the world and we want to create more of the life we want. If that's your path, if that is what you're doing, then you will be stretching yourself. And if you're stretching yourself, then you will come across imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome has nothing to do with how successful or unsuccessful you already are. It really is just about you stretching and moving to the next place. I remember when I was about 15 years in business, and we started the business with nothing, started it with small. And so it had taken time to grow. And in the early years, any profits made were reinvested back into the business so it could grow and develop. And over time, I began to acquire some of the trappings of success, the nice house, the nice car, all those bits and pieces, your lifestyle, all the things that come along with being a successful business owner. And I was probably about 15 years into this. When I looked around one day, looked at the life I created for myself and for my family and the success in the business, and I began to think, I've really been very lucky. I've been lucky because year after year, we've been successful and that's had a great benefit to us. Now, that didn't mean that over those 15 years, I didn't have knockbacks, challenges, hardships. We even went through a very severe recession, but I had overcome those. There had been some lean years, but overall, year after year, I had been successful. And my thought to myself is, how lucky are you? And how lucky are me really was the fact that I was looking around at other people I knew and I judged their success as being down to their talent and their ability. And my success was all down to luck. And thankfully in that moment, a voice in my head asked the question, really? You've been in business for 15 or 20 years now and you've been consistently successful. Who gets to be lucky that long? And of course, my logical mind then have to admit, Nobody gets to be lucky that long. You get to be good that long and you get to grow and you get better. Now, we all need a little bit of luck. I certainly do. And I'm not denying that. But if you've been consistent for a long time, then you know it's more than luck. And I realized that that was the imposter in my mind. That was the imposter saying, Paul, everyone else's success is because their talent and your success is because you're just lucky. You've fallen out of bed. You've stumbled across this. Of course, that's not true. So we need to recognize this because as soon as we recognize it, we can kill it, we can stop it, we can point our minds somewhere else and we can accept the fact that it's not true. But if we don't recognize it, we can go down that road of thinking, oh, I shouldn't be here. I'm not as good as everyone else. And we all know that is just not 
So, so I have five simple steps for you that will help you overcome imposter syndrome the next time you come across it. And the first step is to go and talk to somebody about it. Then that may be a mentor, coach, or a close friend, someone you can trust. Because what happens when you open up about your imposter syndrome to someone else, to someone you trust and respect, is as you're saying it, you know it's not true. Because you're now sharing it with someone else who's not emotionally attached to the situation, who's logically looking at this and looking at you. And in your own mind, you begin to go, well, what, why am I saying this? This is not true. And if you don't say that, your friend, mentor, or coach will reflect back to you that's not true. They will look at you surprised and go, well, you've worked really, really hard and you are talented. So that's why you're successful. That's why you're getting this promotion. That's why you've landed this new client. You're not just lucky, actually are talented and you work very, very hard. But the other thing they'll tell you, they'll most likely admit you is that, well, I feel it too. Everyone feels it. It's not a question of what you feel imposter syndrome or not. It's a question of how you go to respond to it. So talking to someone else can really allow you to put a great perspective on it and to shift your way through it. The second way to overcome imposter syndrome is to learn to say thank you when you get positive feedback. Have you noticed that for most people, when they receive a compliment from somebody, when someone praises them, says something nice about them, it seems to be in our nature to push that back and to play it down and to deny its reality. We very rarely just want to accept that and say, thank you. This is a lesson that's modeled perfectly by my youngest son. I've noticed something with him, that when someone pays him a compliment, and that could be, you look well, you did something very well, that's great work you did. When someone pays him a compliment, he pauses, he beams a big smile at them, and he goes, thank you. Now, a wonderful thing happens when he says thank you. Firstly, Obviously, he feels good because he's taken on board a compliment and he's taken a moment to let the register and go, hey, thank you very, very much. But secondly, the giver of the compliment feels great because they've given a genuine compliment. And when somebody receives that gift, it's just a wonderful thing to experience. It makes you feel great because you can see it really landed. Now, he models that beautifully because it's so rare, because most people do the opposite. They push it back. So what I'm going to suggest you to do is next time someone gives you a compliment, somebody praises you, pause for a moment, look them in the eye, smile, and say, thank you. Why else would someone give you a compliment if it wasn't genuine? Would you? No, when you compliment someone, you're pointing out something that they do really, really well. And it's lovely for them to acknowledge it and say thank you. So the next time someone gives you a compliment, say thank you. Because in doing this, you're training your brain to recognize the things that you do well to build your confidence, to build your courage, and to acknowledge the talents and skills that you already have. Number three is the obvious follow-on from that. Start a success journal. Get yourself a notepad and start writing down all the successes you have. Now, when you're writing in your success journal, I encourage you to acknowledge all of your successes. In any given day, I can guarantee you there are a hundred things you do really, really well that you don't really acknowledge and that you don't recognize because you become so competent, you become so much in the flow of the things that you don't acknowledge all the great things you do already. If you start acknowledging and writing down your success journey, all the small things you do and the big things you do, again, you're training your brain to recognize, to look for the success in your life. And as you do that, your brain begins to shift into recognizing how competent you already are and how capable you already are. And from that place of competence and capable, you'll be more likely to take on new challenges, even if they're difficult for you. And you won't feel like an imposter. You will feel challenged, certainly. You may feel nervous, but that makes no difference to you. You will still step forward with authenticity, take on the challenge, sometimes admit that you're feeling a bit anxious about it or nervous about it, but you have a faith in yourself, you know you can do it. And that's a really strong muscle to build. Number four is to develop the habit of positive self-talk. Now it follows on from everything else we've spoken about. Watch your self-talk during the day because we speak to ourselves all day long. And think of your self-talk like this. You have a very critical friend and you have a very supportive friend. So every time you're talking to yourself, pause for a moment and go, is this my inner critic talking to me, or is this my supportive friend talking to me? Because you have two voices, but I'm going to guess you spend most of your time in the inner critic. 
giving out yourself about all the things you don't do well, complaining to yourself, and not very much time in a positive friend. Let me ask you this. If you had a very good friend or a child you were taking care of, how would you speak to them? Would you speak to them in the positive, encouraging voice, or would you speak to them in the critical voice? And what would you expect the outcome to be? If you spoke to them in the encouraging voice, how would you expect them to help their progress? And if you spoke to them in the critical voice, how would you expect that to impact negatively on their progress? You see, we have these voices inside our head, and it's your responsibility to train your brain, to train your mind to lean towards the positive. And the first thing you have to do is recognize it, spot it, and go, I'm not going to be the critical friend. I'm going to lean towards the positive friend. So you want to be building your self-confidence and building your self-esteem. But you're not doing this in a cocky way. You're doing this in a sincere, authentic way where you're genuinely recognizing all the positive traits you have. If you want to dig into this one a little bit deeper, check out podcast number 35 called Tame the Inner Critic, where we go into how you can really start practicing this work. And number five is to take it in baby steps. If imposter syndrome has been a problem for you, don't think you're going to kill it overnight. Because if you do that, you'll get rejected, you'll get defeated, and you'll go, I can't do this. The imposter will come in again. So what I want you to do is maybe start small or start wherever you feel comfortable. But you don't have to take on the big challenges right away if they're really challenging you. Take the small challenge, master that, recognize that you were able to do that, that you have the talent, and then move on to something else. So if you continually build on baby steps and getting stronger and stronger and stronger, very soon you'll feel capable of taking on the big challenge. And imposter syndrome will raise its head when you take on the big challenge and you'll look at square in the eye and go, I'm not listening to you. I know what you are and you're not coming in this journey with me. And you lean towards the positive self-talk where you recognize your talents, recognize your success, recognize your own self-worth and you'll move forward with courage. Imposter syndrome is probably going to always be with you. At least I hope it's always with you. Because it's our nature. And if it's always with you, it means that you're always challenging yourself. You're always moving forward and you're always wanting to grow. So to some degree, the imposter syndrome will always raise its head. What's going to happen if you follow these five steps is its voice is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. And sure, when you've taken a big challenge, its voice may be there. But now you're going to know to look at it right away and dismiss it. It's not about entirely getting rid of imposter syndrome. It's about recognizing it and deciding how you're going to behave when imposter syndrome raises its ugly head. Are you going to pay attention to it? Are you going to ignore it, lean into your own confidence and move forward anyway? And if you do, trust me, you can do great things. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. It really helps the show. Until next time, thank you and take care.